what's up guys, Chris Chain here for Chris Core Productions. So that is what we're gonna be creating today. Really excited because we finally get to dive into some of those motion graphics, tips and tricks and techniques that I've been wanting to discuss with you guys since you have asked how I made my intro and other motion graphics animations that I've done on this channel and for client work. So this is gonna be a great opportunity to dive into all of that. And of course, if you haven't seen the previous tutorials of this series, we created a uh, vertigo effect and we also created the VHS grungy look that we're gonna be seeing uh, in this tutorial. So we're not gonna be focusing on how to create that VHS look since we already covered that in a separate tutorial in the previous week. Today, we are just going to create that uh, cheesy retro style 80s uh, intro or outro and pretty much covering some basic techniques that you can uh, do in After Effects to uh, animate and just add a little bit of spice to those intros. All right, awesome, so let's jump into it and let's create a new solid. Uh, make it any color you want, doesn't really matter because we're going to apply a gradient ramp and we're trying to create an infinite background so we can just grab this top guy, bring it to the center here. Um, so this will be our background layer. We're gonna worry about the colors in just a second. Let's create another solid and let's add an effect called grid. So it's under generate and grid. So let's drag that onto that. And we're gonna play around with the size. So we're gonna change it from corner point to width and height sliders so we can um, see how many rows and you know pretty much blocks we have on this grid. That should be fine. So one of the next steps that we wanna do is make it a 3D layer so we can actually rotate it and uh, you know make it look 3D and stuff. And then we can sort of expand it so that we don't see where it ends. One thing that we can do is animate the position of uh, this layer grid to sort of come at us. So in the beginning here, uh, we're gonna set a keyframe, we're gonna push it all the way back in uh, Z space. But I don't like how you can actually see the end of it and I actually want it to match with that uh, infinite background look so it sort of looks like it's fading off into the distance. So for that, we're gonna create a new solid and we're gonna use this as a mat. So we're gonna make a mask to about where the our horizon line pretty much ends and fades out and then we're gonna feather that mask out and then we're gonna tell our grid layer to um, look at that mat as its alpha mat so that we can see that it sort of disappears off into the distance. It pretty much gets cut off by, um, by the solid that we created. So let's go ahead and uh, change the position of this last keyframe so that our grid actually comes a little bit more forward. So now that we've done that, let's uh, get some text going in here. And what I recommend doing is taking a look online at some of those intros from the 80s. And you know, it's a style that has been revitalized for a lot of uh, modern day things. So you can find some really good examples online of uh, what this uh, should look like in a way. So I've actually downloaded some fonts, which I highly recommend you guys do as well, since uh, that will come a long way in uh, selling this effect. So I'm going to pick sort of this, uh, this weird disco font and uh, that's looking pretty good. So let's uh, place it where we want it in our composition and it's also adjust the anchor point so that when, whenever we do some animating or some scaling up and down, it's not going to do anything weird. All right, so let's duplicate this text layer. So what I want to do is just find the outline of this text. So for that, I'm going to apply a find edges effect and um, we can click on invert so that we can actually key out the black part and just have the white outline. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, a faster way, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, if it works, it works, you know? So uh, let's just bump this number up, the color tolerance. And now uh, we just have an outline. So looking pretty good. So as you can see, if I scale this up, we have an outline. All right, so let's get into animating this text so that it appears uh, as this grid is coming at us. So I'm gonna go under the scale property of that first uh, text layer that we created, set a keyframe there, and then move back in time in the beginning and scale it down, just scale it down to zero so that we don't see it anymore. So now we have uh, this text that just appears like that. Instead of just copying and pasting these keyframes for that outline layer, I'm just gonna parent that outline layer to that uh, first text layer that we created so that now they both uh, scale the same way. And now a cool thing about this is that once we have this uh, text appear, we can actually animate uh, the scale of the outline on its own so we can have it do something different such as you know expanding away from, uh, from the main text that we're seeing. And then of course uh, we can just uh, play around with the opacity and fade it out as it expands uh, past a certain point. I mean, this is again just something I thought I'd do, but you guys can take full liberties of doing whatever you want with this. Um, so 
then I duplicated the, uh, the outline layers a bunch of times and I offset them in time so that it's multiple ones coming out as, the, uh, as our main text settles from uh, being scaled up. So that is essentially the main chunk of, uh, of the animation that went into this, uh, into this logo really. So really, really simple stuff. But now let's uh, polish it off with adjusting some of the colors and adding a uh, few extra elements to really spice this up. So we're gonna create a new composition and we're gonna create some fake reflection. We're gonna try to add a little bit of a chrome look to that uh, text layer since that's something that apparently was really popular for, for this type of style at least. So again, we're gonna add a gradient ramp and uh, we're just gonna pick some, um, some colors. I guess we'll pick a bluish color for the top. And um, I guess to make it look like a reflection, we can pick sort of like a sandy brown. And then uh, let's add a new black solid. And I guess what we can do is just uh, use our pen tool here and just create some, some rough mountains, some, just some generic shapes. You, you don't really have to understand what it is. It's just some stuff to be inside the text. Again, this is just a reflection um, sort of thing. So now let's bring in that new composition that we created into our main comp where we have our text. And let's place that below the text layer and set it to alpha mat. So now you can see that we're seeing through the text and it's outlining uh, the reflection composition that we created. And we can scale this down, shrink it, and uh, maybe we can just go back into this comp, make these mountains maybe a little bit thinner. I think they're uh, taking up a little bit too much space in the text. So let's see how that looks like. Okay, I mean, I think the colors are actually pretty awful. We can. Uh, Go back in there and, and change those in a second. Let's focus on the grid for now. We're gonna add a fill effect uh, on that on that grid layer, so we can uh, give it some nice neon colors. So let's go into our ramp effect and let's finally adjust those colors. We can give it like a maybe like a dark purplish uh, color, and we can probably just keep the the rest of it black. All right, so I want to show you a neat little trick that can uh, really just tie all of this together. Uh, and that is just creating some some fake reflections, but not like we just did, some actual like shininess, like cartoon. You're gonna see what I mean in just a second. Let's create a white solid. Let's uh, scale this up so that we have enough room to play with. Let's turn it off for now, and let's use our pen tool and just create some like diagonal boxes, uh, essentially. So like just create a bunch of them, different uh, shapes, like as far as like the thickness of them, separate them out. And um, then once you're done with that, we can turn that layer back on, select it, move it below that uh, duplicate of that text layer that we created, set that solid to have its alpha mat, the text layer, and now you can sort of see where we're going with this. So let's animate this so that you see what I mean exactly. So let's push this all the way to the left, set a keyframe, and then after maybe about like a second or I don't know, depends on what you like, push it all the way to the right. So now if I scroll through here, you can see that I'm, I'm having this, uh, uh, I don't know what I would call this, like, I guess it's a reflection or like a glare or something like that, but definitely very cool and it just adds to this overall style. So let's make a few more copies of that main text layer and let's, as always, uh, parent it with our main text layer. And what we wanna do here is, uh, let's see, go onto our character parameters and let's pick like a, like a pinkish violet color uh, maybe a little bit darker, click OK. And let's make another copy of this. And we're sort of creating like a fake 3D look to this text. Um, also another thing that you might have noticed is that I've left all of my keyframes linear. I don't usually do this, I usually easy ease them and I, I you know, tweak them a little bit so that it's, it has a little bit more of a dynamic and uh, more real feel to it. So that's what I would normally do but I'm actually leaving them linear on purpose because it sort of matches the limitations that they had back then when animating this stuff. So it's all very abrupt and it's kind of jerky at times. So that's that's the whole thing with that. So back to the tutorial, I'm just gonna add a uh, quick radio blur to those, uh, to those text layers that are behind our main text layer. And let me just jump back into this reflection because this color is just terrible. Let me pick like a more uh, red-ish color. So that looks slightly better. I mean, we're still not there yet. Trust me, there's a lot more that needs to go into this. Let's create like a subtitle for this. And I'm using a font that is actually used in Grand Theft Auto. It's a very cool font called Sign Painter. Um, then I'm gonna place that below this, uh, our main text here. And uh, let's see what kind of animation we can do to this. Um, let's bring up the position and scale. 
And of course you want to make sure that the anchor point is at the bottom of the text layer. Set a keyframe for that and let's see, let's push this up and scale it down. So, okay, what I want to do is have this text layer fly from behind our main text layer. But the issue with that is that of course, um, once it settles in front of it, you know, if you want to move it back, well, it's, it's still going to be in front because of the hierarchy of how the layers work in After Effects. So a quick little solution for that would be to, as soon as it's up here, so before going behind it, we can splice this layer. So hit Shift Command D, and then this uh, first portion of the layer, we can just drag it below our, uh, our main text layer. So as soon as I do that and I go back, you can see that it goes behind and then it goes in front. So neat little trick to sort of go around that, that problem. All right, so we have a basic idea of, of the logo. Now let's try to incorporate it into our footage and uh, let's do some final tweaks. So we have this footage from the intro. So let's uh, uh, maybe freeze frame the last frame of this clip, stretch it out so that we can actually overlay our uh, outro over this, uh, this portion of our footage. So let's bring in our uh, logo that we created, our animation. And we can play with uh, maybe some of the transfer modes and make some, several copies of it so that we can have different effects. So the first one, I'll set the screen, make a duplicate, and I mean, I'm just gonna play with the transfer modes until I find uh, several copies of them with different transfer modes that sort of work for the scene. And I ended up with this, so we have screen, add, screen, uh, and normal. So that gives us this effect. So we're seeing the edge on top of the, of the normal one because I actually pushed all of these down a little bit to center the logo. So I'm just gonna add a quick mask, feather it out, and uh, that gets rid of that. So now I'm gonna add one last thing is an adjustment layer on the bottom of everything. And we're just gonna make the background, the backdrop of our, of our footage look even crazier. So very psychedelic-y. And then we can simply just uh, fade this in as the logo appears. So just animate the opacity down to zero. And then uh, we can maybe just add an, another outline layer to uh, just stay in place over the text layer. So not just expanding out like the other ones. So we just make a copy, delete the scale uh, and opacity keyframes. And that just, uh, I don't know, that just delineates the text a little bit better so that we get a better picture of, of what it is. All right, so that is pretty much all that is involved in creating this effect. Now you're seeing a couple little extra things here and there that I've decided to add, and that's just all stock elements that I got from, uh, I believe it was from Video Hive. So I'll just post the link in the description. It's a uh, paid product, so didn't really want to include it in this, uh, in this tutorial. But again, if you have anything like that, you can adapt some stuff from Action Essentials. You can just add some, uh, some stock footage and add some assets over this to really spice things up a little bit. And that's something I usually do over uh, my, uh, my motion graphics work as well. But as far as the animation, all the foundation is there for you to create. Not just, of course, um, Hades retro style intros and outros, but really just about anything. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, if you haven't checked out the other tutorials that we did, we created a vertigo effect, and we created the VHS look that you've seen in, uh, in, in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Share this video with your friends if you found it useful, and give it a like. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Corp Productions, and I will see you next time.